Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today we're going to have a nice short video about how to tune one of these guys, right? The Squiddy Cone Balasong, which also happens to be my travel balasong, by the way. Uh, big shout out to my balasong box here. Um, you know, this holds all my balasongs. Um, the link will be in the pinned comment to where uh, to buy one of these, and also for my video review in the pinned comment as well for, for this box. And, you know, perhaps if you want, I'll make a tutorial on how to, how exactly I made the box rather than just going over it. Um, but yeah, so this is my my little travel ballast on here, my, my squiddy clone. Nope. I guess it's a little a little tight, but it sounds pretty pretty good. I mean, you know, it's pretty decent as well as uh, now this one isn't as decent, I guess you could say. However, it's still very much uh, adequate for. I mean, anything that you need it for. So the only thing you need is a T8 tool, right, like this, bad boy here. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching my kaboon. Um, and essentially, all you need is this screwdriver and a piece of sandpaper. However, do as I say, not as I do. This is 400 grit. I recommend at least 600, ideally at least 800, if not 1,000 grit sandpaper. This will take a little bit of time, and you may, uh, if you want to kind of save yourself some time, you may want to also perhaps purchase for yourself a pair of veneer calipers. Um, it'll just make your life a bit easier, um, a bit more streamlined. But essentially, when you get your squiddy clone, um, you want to obviously undo undo the screws. I actually think one of these is Loctited, so I'll just undo one of them. Um, so you basically undo your little screw there. So this is a bite handle. Um, I should probably give this some sort of marker to, to signify that. Uh, I guess that would be fine. All right, just slot that on. Just so I know which is which, obviously, because that affects how the, uh, the screws are put back on, right? And so, yeah, you just pop that out and you pop this Little dude out here. You may need some some force, as you can see. Don't be scared to be forceful with these things. These are quite durable, and uh, this is actually on a traditional bushing system. So when you pull this out, right, you get okay. You get a bit of a mess here, but you get a bushing here, and you get these two washers, right. So this is your your bushing, right. This is what sits inside your blade. Um, inside here and you can see this is literally just like the squiddy just with hole for bushing and you get your two washers <coughs> what you're then going to do is you're going to take your veneer calipers and you're going to zero them and you're going to come here and you're going to give it a rough measurement and you're going to see it's at about 3.54 millimeters or for those of you who are in uh, inches land you know it's about point you know one four inches which Okay, so now we have a target. So these bushings, I believe when they start, they will be... So it's three and a half here, right? Uh, in mil. I think they'll be somewhere like four and a half, maybe even five mil. These bushings, they are humongous. Um, and essentially, you just want to sand them down. I have it sanded down to about 3.64. Now, you can, in theory, go down quite far. Um, down to potentially kind of 3.55 if you will. However, keep in mind that there is not much weight on the plastic handle and you do want this to still be able to rotate. So the force from the handle has to be able to cause this to swing. Obviously, ideally, you want there to be like no forces applied here, but worst case scenario, if you have this really cranked down, you want the forces of the handle from the weight of the handle to be able to cause swing on this bad boy here, which is why I've only sanded it down uh, to, again, like I said before, you know, 3.64. So we have a good 0.1 mil um, of, you know, clearance easily, possibly even 0.15 uh, of space. Now, when you do come to, uh, you know, you have your bushing here now and you need to sand it to uh, make it the right size, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take it, you're going to want to kind of hold it like this on your sandpaper, make sure it's on a flat, hard surface, and you're going to go in circular motion like this, and you're going to do one, two, three, four, five, You'll then do a figure eight, and then one, two, three, four, five. 
And you'll want to alternate between, you know, clockwise and counterclockwise. And also, if you can, once you get better at it, you'll want to rotate the bushing kind of like this as you, as you spin. Just so that you get as flat of a sanding as possible when you're bushing. That's the most important part, that you do have it sanded flat. Because if you don't have it sanded flat, <coughs> you can get binding at certain points of the swing and not at others. Also, please excuse me, I'm still sick, but I'm still trying to churn out these videos for you guys. Um, yeah, basically, you know, non-stop, we're going to be on the grind. I'll be doing my best to do daily videos for you. Uh, I'll try to keep those up somewhat. Um, you know, I'll try to also keep them mostly balisson related. Um, but yes, so, once you've done that, right, and you've measured this down, I say probably stop at like 3.7. If you're going to do it all in one go, stop at about 3.7, and then, whenever you want to do a test fit, you simply grab your dude here. I like to put the bushing in. I then put the top washer in. Now make sure you keep your washers in the correct orientation. You can see here, uh, if I shine it with the light correctly, well, you can see there's like an indent of the washer, or of the bushing on the washer. I just put that, because uh, that's my top washer. I put this as my bottom washer, and then I slide the handle on top. Now the good strategy to do is to have your washers slightly out, uh, past the handle, this works for metal balancers as well, and then you can slide the handle on top, and then I just take this dude here, if you don't have a pivot needle, although thankfully I have them with this one, somewhere, there we go, I have an abalus one here, so I can just also do that, um, you know, this is a big time saver if you're constantly disassembling balance ones, but this kind of round and round and round and round about strategy does also work and then you simply shove in your pivot once again right um and then i guess you tighten this back down now these are t8 screws unfortunately however i do find they're probably some of the best t8 screws i've had the uh, pleasure of handling um, and you can actually crank these i'm pretty sure they're fairly tight um and they should still give you good swing now you still want this to be very light a good test i like to do is to hold the bell song like this in the other handle and to bring up this handle and to see does the blade move at all like this um, and of course you know the swing test is a good test as well and then the final icing on the cake i personally think is always just to add a little bit of lubrication in fact we're going to use the uh, bally plus lube because i think this stuff is really solid uh, really good budget alternative by the way I'm not sure if they still sell this stuff. If they do, I'll also try and link that in the description. Or not in the description, in the pinned comment. Um, you know, get this kind of super accessible for you guys. It's the thick one. It's really good stuff. It's really cheap. Um, if not the armchair glue, uh, it's also really good. Um, and it doesn't have a crazy smell. And then you just kind of wiggle it in and. Obviously, I'm missing a weight here. Uh, I did lose a screw. But you should have a much nicer feeling bow song. And if you get your tune correct, because that's all I did to my bow song, honestly. I have these two both done to about 3.5mm. Uh, and if you get this tune, you know, correctly done, nicely done. Let me just open up my one as well. Should have a nice a nice balsam that you can practice around with, flip with, and take everywhere you want to go. Um, I think this I don't think will ever be obsolete really for me. Um, I do think I'm not sure where the video cut off, but you know I don't think this will ever be replaced. I think my G10 Orca can do this, you know, the job that that does quite a bit better. I think this is better balanced, it looks better, but it also looks more like a knife, so it might not pass through customs as easily, obviously, because this is also a titanium blade, so this is perfectly fine in the airport. This should be as well, but I would understand if they were to confiscate this, so that is that at the end of the day. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you, uh, you know, gained something useful from this video. That is how to modify your Squiddy clone in order to get yourself not no tap, um, you know, that's one thing as well about this. No tap. Um, yeah, if you get yourself a nice squiddy clone, 
that's how to modify it. It won't have no tap. I don't think it won't have no tap. I don't think it's even possible uh, with this with this kind of construction. But either way, yeah, really solid stuff. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave a subscribe. Consider becoming a channel member. Uh, check out the links in the description below to pick up any of the stuff you've seen here in the video. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.